Stay tuned for another News Center 88 presentation on WMUL FM Huntington. And now, the News Center 88 Weekend Recap, covering the top stories around the globe, tri state, and across the campus of Marshall University. And now, the News Center 88 Weekend Recap Team. Welcome to this edition of New Center 88's Weekend Recap. I'm Emma Johnson. And I'm Willen Smith. Coming up on this edition of Weekend Recap, Luke Hamilton will be in with this week's weather forecast, and John Bogus will be in with a recap of the week that was in Marshall Athletics. Now onto our top story. Two pilots were at the helm of the cargo ship Dolly on Tuesday when it lost power and minutes later crashed into a pillar of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, causing the bridge to collapse and kill six construction workers. That is putting the highly specialized role in which a pilot temporarily takes control of a ship from its regular captain under the spotlight. So far, there is no indication the lead pilot on the Dolly did anything wrong. Maritime experts say there was likely nothing the pilots could have done to stop the nine, excuse me, 95,000 ton ship from plowing into the bridge. Maryland Governor Wes Moore has been granted $60 million in immediate federal aid. He says the city will need to work together to build itself back. We need every single Baltimorean and we need every single Marylander to join us in this work to rebuild this bridge and rebuild this city. And that work is happening as we speak. The best minds in the world are coming together to collect the information that we need to move forward with speed and safety in our response to this collapse. The Moscow Concert Hall attack a week ago that left more than 140 people dead was a major blunder for Russia's law enforcement agencies. While the government register of terrorist and extremist groups in the country includes Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State group, it also lists LGBTQ activists and political opposition groups like that of the late opposition leader Alexei Navalny. That has raised questions about how Russia's vast security services evaluate threats to the country and how gunmen could easily kill so many people at a public event. President Vladimir Putin came to power 24 years ago by taking a tough line against what he labeled as terrorism. An international team of doctors was prepared for the worst before visiting a hospital in central Gaza. The doctors were never less stunned by the gruesome impact that Israel's war against Hamas is having on Palestinian children. People are tired. We, our team has been doing this for five days. We're exhausted. I can't imagine what the Gazan team, who's been here for 162 days, doing this 24-7, 162 days without resources, is dealing with. You asked me whether they had the resources to, to deal with these cases. No. One toddler died from a brain injury caused by an Israeli strike. His cousin, an infant, is still fighting for her life. These gut-wrenching casualties were described to the Associated Press by a pediatric doctor who was part of a seven-doctor team that recently finished a two-week stint in Gaza, whose hospitals have been devastated by the war that began on October 7. Coming up, a house fire near Marshall's campus nearly burnt down two homes. Stay with us for a recap of news across the Tri-State and the campus of Marshall University. Listening to West Virginia's first public radio station. Public radio? What does that mean? No commercials. So all I'm trying to say is maybe uh, no commercials is a good idea. Help build ratings. So crank up the commercial free sound of WMUL FM 88.1, and we guarantee you won't hear one single commercial. Welcome back to New Center 88's Weekend Recap. I'm Emma Johnson. And I'm Willen Smith. On Sunday, a house fire behind a Marshall student's parking lot was seen all around campus. New Center 88's Luke Hamilton joins us with more. As Marshall students made their way back to campus after spring break, Marshall baseball faced off against Arkansas State today. Some fans and people around Huntington may have seen some smoke in the sky. Smoke came from this house behind me right here on Buffington Avenue that almost completely burned down. At that point, I just immediately turned back, uh, went and grabbed my kids and ran out the house. And then I just kind of stood and watched as it crept over to mine. And One person was taken to the hospital as EMS arrived. 
and the house right next door, just a few feet away, started burning down around the outside and some of the power lines were damaged. Thankfully, Marshall Police and Huntington Fire Department got here quickly and prevented that house from burning down. The people who lived there before kind of left it in abandoned state while they were living there. Um, there were multiple times that I would come out and there there would be a uh, extension cord reached across to the outlet in front of my house. The actual cause of the fire still under investigation in the main house is it's going to be a total loss. Uh, there's damage throughout the entire first floor. At this point, that's about as far as I made it in the investigation. Recently, Marshall University and the surrounding area has turned into a construction zone. Bladley Hall was torn down and construction crews filled in potholes while students were on break. University President Brad Smith says new construction is not the first change that needs to be made. We're going to take care of the house, which means deferred maintenance, take care of the buildings we already have, stop trying to go build a bunch of new stuff. And so we rolled out community cares where we have volunteers in the community come in the spring and help us do landscaping and power washing and painting. And it's just amazing what we get done. The list of improvements is long, but Smith says it's all part of the plan. So you are going to see Holder be coming down. You're going to see improvements in the wayfinding and the signage around campus. You're going to see roofs going on the buildings that leak. You're going to see new HVAC systems, air conditioning, so our College of Science doesn't get super hot in the chemistry lab. All those things are underway, and we called it Project Shock and All because we got them shovel ready, and as soon as they transferred the money from the state to us, we got busy. Smith was able to squeeze $21 million out of the state for deferred maintenance. The most Marshall has ever received in one year was about $1 million. Coming up next, five takeaways from the abortion pill case before the U.S. Supreme Court. Stay with us for a recap of news from around the nation when New Center 8 returns right after this. The worldwide leader of Marshall University sports coverage. So Marshall and North Carolina about 45 seconds away from tip-off here inside the Dean Dome. High atop the Liberty Bowl. Broadcasting from what we'll call affectionately the tool shed. As the kick is high and end over end, we're underway here at Lane Stadium. Welcome back to the Wallstein Center in downtown Cleveland, Ohio. Marshall women's basketball on the brain. WMUL FM Huntington. Welcome back to the News Center 88 Weekend Recap. I'm Emma Johnson. And I'm Willen Smith. The total solar eclipse expected on April 8th is already inspiring school lessons in science, literacy, and culture. It's going to go completely dark for like, uh, like, About like four three, minutes. Like and four a half. minutes. It's like when the moon, like, goes around the, like, the earth, so it becomes dark. In the afternoon, it's going to be really dark. Some schools in or near the path of totality also are organizing group viewings for students to experience the awe of daytime darkness and learn about the astronomy behind it together. Dennis Schatz, a former president of the National Science Teaching Association, encourages educators to use the eclipse as a teachable moment, but the timing of the eclipse around dismissal time for some in its path means many schools will be closed for the day so that students aren't stuck on buses or in crowds expected to gather. My fellow lawyer, a brilliant scientist, technologist, a fierce warrior mom, Nicole Shanahan. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has chosen Nicole Shanahan to be his vice presidential pick. Kennedy is mounting an independent White House bid that has spooked national Democrats. Shanahan is a California lawyer who has never held an elected office before. And Kennedy is a former Democrat made the announcement in Oakland, California. Without the backing of a party, Kennedy faces the task of getting on the ballot with varying rules across the 50 states. He's picking a running mate now because about half of the states require him to designate one before he can apply for ballot access. U.S. Supreme Court justices on Tuesday did not appear ready to limit Americans' access to the abortion pill Mifepristone in a case that could have sweeping implications for how the federal government approves scores of medications. The justices asked detailed questions about the safety of mifepristone, one of the most common ways for women in America to end a pregnancy. But they also raised issues with the arguments made by plaintiffs, a group of anti-abortion doctors who went to see the drug's availability severely restricted. Many anti-abortion and pro-life activists traveled to the nation's capital to protest. This case is a sham. This medication is safe, has been used safely for decades. That's a lifelong decision that some people can't live with and, and, and they commit 
suicide to get out from the grief. It hurts them so bad. Coming up, Luke Hamilton will be in with this week's weather forecast, and FM 88 Sports' John Bogus will be in with a recap of the week that was in Marshall Athletics. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the WMUL request line singer. Oh man, we're out of range. I'll miss all of my favorite music. No worries. With WMUL's 24-7 live stream, the cutting edge of your radio dial becomes the cutting edge of your phone too. Just go to marshall.edu slash WMUL and your favorite music goes wherever you do. I'll pull it up now, just in time for more music. Call 696-6651 now. DJs are standing by. Welcome back to the News Center 88 Weekend Recap. I'm Luke Hamilton and it's time for this week's weather forecast. Temperatures are slowly creeping up into the high 60s and low 70s this weekend, with a high of 69 on Saturday and 70 on Sunday. This Easter Sunday will be a cloudy one, but precipitation is only expected at around 11 a.m. Monday will come with a 40% chance of rain, but the high for the day will be 74. Rain is expected on Tuesday and Wednesday of this upcoming week, and temperatures will have a drastic drop-off in the middle of the week, going from a high of 69 on Tuesday to a high of 50 on Wednesday. So enjoy those 70 plus degree days on Sunday and Monday because we won't get out of the 50s and 60s until next weekend. Some good news for next Friday though. The sun will be out and about after a cool cloudy week. This weekend in weather history, on Sunday, March 31st in 1962, a tornado touched down in Southeast Tifton, Georgia, ripping off roofs of several homes and uprooting several trees. That concludes this week's weather forecast. For News Center 88, I'm Luke Hamilton. Thanks, Luke. Now John Bogus joins us with a recap of the week that was in Marshall Athletics. Thanks, Emma. The Marshall baseball team began a four-game road stretch Tuesday, facing off against number 13 Virginia Tech in Blacksburg, Virginia. Although the Thundering Herd would out-hit the Hokies 10-6, the Thundering Herd would leave nine runners stranded and lose 4-2. Marshall took the lead early, scoring a run in the top of the first inning when Owen Ayers scored on a passed ball. Virginia Tech would quickly respond in the bottom of the first when Henry Cook doubled to right center to bring in three runners. Virginia Tech scored again in the bottom of the fourth when David McCann hit a homer to right center. Marshall would manage one more run in the top of the ninth with KB Peralta getting an RBI. But Virginia Tech stopped Marshall from completing the comeback Cam Harthen and A.J. Havrilla each had a multi-hit game, with Harthen now recording a hit in eight straight games. Chad Heiner received the loss in the contest and is now 1-4 this season. Marshall Baseball then traveled to Boone, North Carolina Thursday to begin a three-game series against App State. Marshall ended its two-game slide, defeating App State 9-8. The win is certainly a boost of confidence for the Herd, as App State recently won a series against nationally ranked Coastal Carolina. Marshall got the first run of the game, scoring in the top of the first with Gio Ferraro got an RBI after grounding out. App State would then tie the game in the bottom of the first with a run of its own. Marshall took the lead back at the top of the third with Elijah Vogelsong hitting a three-run homer, and App State got its own homer in the bottom of the third when Henry St. Laurent hit one making the score 4-2. In the sixth inning, Marshall scored three more, and Joseph Zamora hit another home run for App State, scoring three. Marshall scored its last two runs at the top of the seventh unearned. App State would score three more between the seventh and eighth innings, but would not catch up to Marshall. Drew Harlow was the winning pitcher, making his record this season four and three. Marshall baseball then played App State again on Friday and Saturday, with it next returning home Tuesday to play a second game against Virginia Tech. Marshall softball returned home to begin a three-game series against ULM on Thursday. The herd fell to the Warhawks in six innings, 16 to eight. ULM scored at least one run in every inning but the second in the game. Brooklyn Allridge racked up five runs in the game for Marshall with two home runs. The home run in the top of the fifth was a grand slam hit outside the right field wall. The grand slam was Allridge's second of the season. She is the first member of the herd to have multiple grand slams in one season since Samantha Rodriguez did so in 2007. Bub Feringer received the loss in the circle, making her record 7-6, but she did have a multi-hit game as a batter and matched a career-high five strikeouts. Marshall faced ULM again on Friday and Saturday, and next faces Queens at Dot Hicks Field Tuesday. 
The Marshall football team had its pro day Thursday, with seniors getting the opportunity to perform a workout in front of 23 representatives of 22 NFL teams. Owen Porter, Micah Abraham, Keyshawn Brown, and Dalton Tucker had impressive performances in the drills, getting the scouts talking. Despite being present, Rasheen Ali and Ethan Driscoll did not participate in the drills, but have relationships with several of the scouts in attendance after performing for them at the 2024 NFL Combine. Former Herd defensive lineman Anthony Watts also participated in drills after not being able to do so last year due to a torn Achilles. The next step for these players is talking with teams individually as they prepare for the 2024 NFL Draft taking place between April 25th through April 27th. That's all for the FM88 Sports Report. For FM88 Sports, I'm John Bogus. That concludes this edition of the New Center 88 Week in Recap. Tune in next week for a weekly recap of the top stories around the globe and the tri-state area. You can watch this newscast anytime on JMC TV or WMUL's radio YouTube channels. I'm Willen Smith. And I'm Emma Johnson. Have a great week.